Hello and welcome to uh, St Aidan's Church at Home on the first Sunday in May. Can't believe we're already in May, uh, but a very warm welcome to you, whether you're a regular member of St Aidan's, you're a friend of St Aidan's, or maybe you've just come across this service as you've been browsing the internet and the St Aidan's Facebook page. It's just wonderful to have, uh, have you with us uh, today. And uh, I hope that you're doing really okay. Um, you know, I really think that as this lockdown period continues i know from some of the conversations i've had this week you know understandably people are finding it increasingly difficult and um you know not having face-to-face -face contact with one another not being able to meet as a church uh, and it is it's just it's incredibly tough it's it's something we've not faced before and, and you know as ever i just really hope that this morning uh, as we worship together as we listen to the word together as we pray it will in some way encourage you and uplift you in your spirit and in your walk with Jesus and give you the strength that you need uh, to continue to keep your eyes fixed upon him in this season. So um, I'm just going to begin with a, a couple of notices. One is in relation to the lockdown and just really just a reminder that, to continue to look after one another. Um, I know I've had a number of conversations with people this week and they've been in touch with other members of the church. And so thank you for that. Please do continue to be in touch with one another. Keep an eye on one another. Uh, be praying for one another, making sure that each other has shopping and so on. And um, yeah, it's just so important that we do that in this season. Uh, and it's in, we need to be doing that as collectively as the body of Christ, because uh, it's impossible for any one of us to, to look after everyone in the church. So uh, thank you for all that you are doing and uh, just do continue to do what you're doing and, and look out for one another. I just wanted to really uh, share that. And, and just the other thing is to say a reminder that we're having two prayer meetings a week at the moment. One is on a Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. And so there will be a, a prayer meeting this afternoon at 4 p.m. and one on a Tuesday morning. And so if you'd like to join either of those prayer meetings, please let me know and I can make sure that I send you the details. We're doing them via Zoom so I can send you the meeting ID and the password uh, so that you can join us. And they've been really blessed times just to have been able to pray together, see one another, catch up, have a bit of banter, uh, but of course, uh, most importantly, to, to pray uh, together as well. Birthdays. Well, like last week, I'm not aware of it having been anybody's birthday this past week, but if it has been yours, then many happy returns. Uh, I'm sure, um, you know, we've all, like the rest of the nation, have enjoyed celebrating the birthday of uh, the remarkable Colonel Tom Moore this week as he celebrated his 100th birthday. Uh, quite a stunning celebration. I'm sure he could never have imagined a few weeks ago that he'd be celebrating his birthday with the nation and with so many well wishes and cards and this amazing flyover fly of the hurricane and the spitfire and being elevated from from uh, captain to colonel, just uh, amazing to celebrate with him this week. Quite emotional. I, I certainly had a speck or two of dust in my eye as I was watching that. Uh, so it's been wonderful uh, to celebrate together uh, as, and as a nation this week. Well, we're going to begin our worship in a moment. Uh, so let's, why don't we just still ourselves down, just uh, begin to prepare our hearts to worship Jesus this morning. Uh, to turn our hearts, our affections and our thoughts uh, towards him. And uh, so let's maybe, you might just want to close your eyes and just begin to still yourself down, begin to welcome Jesus into your heart. Lord, we do welcome you this morning. Lord, as we gather as your people and we come before you and we say, Lord, we need you, Lord, in our weakness in our struggles, would you come, Lord, and meet with each one of us this morning? Would you help us, Lord, to put our hope in you, to keep declaring that you are greater, you are stronger, and you are higher than any other? In Jesus' name. Amen. And so we're going to do uh, that now. We're going to declare those things as we sing together, Our God, water you turned into wine. And so I'm going to share my screen.
And so we'll sing together, Our God. turned into wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you None like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Turn into one. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. I'm like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater. stand against it if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what the stand Wonderful. What a great way to start our worship this morning by declaring our God is greater. Our God is stronger. He's greater than anything we might face. He's greater than the coronavirus. He's stronger than the coronavirus. He's higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. And if God is with us, then what can stand 
against us. Just a great way to declare our faith, to declare who God is and how awesome he is as we begin our worship today. And we're now going to come to a time of uh, confession. And uh, so we're going to continue in prayer. And if you'd like to join with me in saying the uh, words in yellow. So the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. And so we say together, almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're going to have a, a time of confession and, and uh, it's just an opportunity for us to clear the decks, as it were, to say, Lord, I'm sorry for anything that may have come in the way of my relationship with you. Uh, and we know that Jesus is so forgiving. He loves to forgive us. And so um, it's just an opportunity to receive his forgiveness now. So God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. How wonderful to know that we have an advocate in heaven. And so we're going to have a moment of silence now as we come before our advocate, Jesus Christ, and we confess our sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we get to say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbours in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate thoughts, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to continue with our worship now, just uh, and give thanks to God for his amazing grace, for his forgiveness, that he always forgives us, when, forgives us when we come to him and we're repentant and we ask him for his forgiveness. We can be sure that we receive that forgiveness, that cleansing. And no longer do we need to feel condemned. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And so we're going to uh, continue our worship by singing the wonderful hymn before the throne of God above. <laughs>
Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there who made a man to hold my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God through justice satisfied to look on him and pardon me. To look on him and pardon me. Spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with Himself, I cannot die. My soul is purchased by His blood. My life is hid with Christ on high. With Christ my Savior and my God. With Christ my Savior and my God. Fantastic. Just another uh, wonderful hymn there, full of truth. Uh, singing to the great unchangeable I am, the one who is the same yesterday, today and forever. No coronavirus changes who God is, the God of love, the God of grace, the God of mercy. He remains the same yesterday, today and forever, the great unchangeable I am. So we're going to um, have the reading for today now. And the reading for today is from uh, Joshua chapter 1. And um, I'm just going to uh, move myself in the screen. And um, so I'm going to read to you uh, Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. And it says this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where, you're, where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory, territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord, your God, is giving you for your own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I just want to share another message really from the heart um, this morning. 
uh, what I feel God has been saying to me. Uh, you know, in this season, it's, I'm always trying to wrestle with God. What is it you're up to? What is it you're doing in this season? Last week, I shared a message about being still, you know, from Psalm 46. I really feel that God is saying in this season uh, to us and to, to the world, to those who don't know Jesus, you know, be still and know uh, that I am God. And one of the things uh, that other leaders and, and some of the prophets around the world have been saying that seems to be quite consistent is that God is using this season to hit the reset button in terms of, uh, you know, the reset button for, for the believers in terms of our own walk with Jesus and the reset button for church and the way that people, the way that churches go about their mission, the way that churches operate, the sense that, you know, things can't be the same once we come out of uh, lockdown. And I have to say that whole theme of God hitting the reset button really resonates with me. You know, Ali and I, my wife Ali and I, uh, in the last few weeks have really felt this sense of God resetting us, um, just renewing our uh, hunger and thirst for Jesus and, and taking us back to some of the foundations and fundamentals of the faith beginning to think afresh about actually what is it to be a genuine biblical uh, disciple of Jesus Christ? What was Jesus' vision of discipleship and what it was to be a disciple of his? What is the gospel? What does it mean to be saved by the gospel? What does it mean to be baptized in water? What does it mean to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Uh, those are the things that we've been wrestling with uh, and thinking through the last few weeks and I dare say I'll share with you some of that uh, in the weeks uh, and months ahead. But uh, as I was praying about what to share with you today, um, I had something in mind and then earlier in the week, I think it was on Tuesday, I felt really prompted to start reading Joshua 1 that we've just had the reading from. And uh, this is a passage that I've returned to a number of times um, during my walk with Jesus. I've shared from this passage before at church. It's just a, a passage that I think is incredibly relevant for today, for us as a church uh, as well. And um, I, as I began to read this chapter uh, and to sort of meditate on it and, you know, mull it over, I'm a bit of a reflector. I need time to think it through and to mull it over and to see what God might be saying through it. I realized that uh, this moment in the history of Israel was God hitting the reset button for Israel. Not because of the coronavirus or any illness, uh, but because of the death of the great leader Moses, who had led the Israelites out of Egypt uh, from slavery in Egypt. And, uh, you know, God had said, Right, Moses, I'm going to give you and the people of Israel uh, a land, a land of your own, the promised land, the land of Canaan. And so that was Moses' task was to lead the people into the promised land. You know, God had given the people of Israel ownership of the land of Canaan. But there is a difference between ownership and possession. You can own something without actually possessing it. And I just want to share with you an illustration. Um, funny enough, um, this week, uh, Nicky Gumbel, and in his uh, reflections from the Bible in one year, was sharing about this whole thing of, um, uh, bear with me whilst I bring it up, this whole area of, of um, the difference between ownership and possession. Bear with me a moment. I thought I had it ready, but I clearly haven't. So he shares his story to illustrate, and um, it's about his maternal grandparents. He says this, My maternal grandparents lived in the small fishing village of Pitt and Ween, wonderful name, Pitt and Ween, uh, near Edinburgh in Scotland. They owned a house there in 1939 at the start of World War II. They left their home to tenants. When the war ended, they wanted to return to their home but they were unable to. The law at the time allowed the tenants to remain in the house for as long as they lived and at approximately the same rent with no adjustment for inflation. Crazy. For 50 years, my grandparents were unable to get possession of the house they owned. My uncle inherited the house from my grandparents. 
By the time he got possession, the condition of the house had deteriorated greatly. He sold it for a very small sum. Although my family owned this house in Pitt and Wean, they never took possession of it. There is a big difference between ownership and possession. The people of Israel, they had ownership of the land, the promised land. This is what God had given them ownership of. But in order to take possession of the land, Israel still needed to take, to step out and to trust that as they stepped out, as they embarked on conquering enemies, that God would give them victory, that God would enable them to take possession of the land that he'd given them ownership of. But what happened? Well, we know from Numbers 13 that um, Moses, where Moses sends out the 12 spies to do a recce on the land of Canaan. We know that the, the 12 spies come back from their recce and 10 of them are kind of full of fear and trembling. They're full of fear and unbelief and they're like, no, Moses, there's no way you can send us into that land. You know, uh, the land is full of giants. There's no way that we can possess it. We'll get beaten God's not going to help us. Uh, and there's two men, Caleb and Joshua, who are full of faith. And they're like, yes, come on, let's go. God's the God of the impossible. God will see us through. He will give us victory. Let's go and take possession of the land that he's given us ownership of. Sadly, we know that Israel listened to those majority those that were full of unbelief and fear that were unable to trust God. And of course, there's a lesson in there for us too. That even if the majority is saying something is impossible, it doesn't mean that they're right. Eight, I did the calculation, I think it was 83% of those spies said, we don't think this is possible. 17%, just two said, come on. And what happened as a result of them listening to the unbelief and the fear? Well, Israel then spent 40 years in the wilderness not taking possession of the inheritance that God had given them. They spent 40 years in the wilderness. And uh, God said to Moses, I'm sorry, Moses, but you're not going to be, you're not going to inherit the land. You're not going to see the land that, um, you're, that I've given you, and neither will your ancestors. So we come to this moment in this morning's reading in Joshua chapter one, when Moses dies and God uses it as an opportunity to hit the reset button for the people of Israel. The reset button on the purpose and mission to which he had called Israel to. And so he says, right, Israel, uh, he says in chapter one, get ready prepare yourselves because now is the time for you to step out in boldness and in courage and finally take possession of the land that i have given you ownership of don't go back to the way that things were don't go back to living in the wilderness that time is done. You know, God was still with the people in the wilderness. He was still their provider. He was still their God. But they failed to live in the fullness of the blessing that they had for them because of their fear and unbelief. And so God says, right, come on, Israel. I'm with you. Now is the time under Joshua's leadership to go forth and conquer the land and possess it. So what does this mean uh, for us? Well, it's my belief uh, and it's my conviction that this is a moment in history that we are in at the moment uh, with this coronavirus, with the time of being at home, of having the opportunity to seek more of God. I believe that this is a moment in history for us as believers and for the church, us as St. Aidan's and for the church in the nation and the church globally to allow God to hit the reset button on our own walk with him and on our mission as a church to allow God to re uh, reestablish our priorities so that our priorities our beliefs are in alignment with scripture in alignment with who Jesus has called us to be as disciples of his in alignment with the way uh, that Jesus has called us to do mission he says 
heal the sick, raise the dead, drive, cast out demons. He says, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is near. I believe this is a season where God is wanting us to hit the reset button. To take possession of what is rightfully ours, what God has given ownership to us of, his inheritance that he's given us ownership of because of what Christ has done through his death upon the cross and through his resurrection. He has purchased for us a remarkable, amazing, mind-blowing inheritance that is beyond our wildest dreams. Uh, uh, But we need to lay hold of it. It doesn't just come to us. We have ownership, but we have to lay own of it, uh, uh, lay hold of it, in order to possess it in the same way that Israel owned the land, but had to lay hold of that, that, that land and to step out in order to possess it. And I believe that this has two applications. This inheriting the promised land has two applications. Firstly, it has the application of inheriting a geographical land. You know, God is still in the uh, process of asking his church, calling his church to inherit the promised land. In other words, extending the boundaries of his kingdom into a geographical area, whether that be a parish, a community, a city, uh, a nation or the nations. In fact, that's what God wants to do. He says, go and make disciples of all nations. He's calling us as believers to extend the boundaries of his kingdom to all nations, to take possession of the land, to fill it with his glory, to, to um, bring his salvation to bear, to d- demonstrate his love and his power. Hallelujah. That is one application. I'm not going to focus on that today, but I think I might speak about that further next week. But today, I want to focus on the second application that I believe that this has about us inheriting the land. And that is us laying hold of the fullness of our inheritance as believers of Christ Jesus. The fullness of our identity, the fullness of our inheritance, because it's so important that we learn to do that. You know, I talk a lot about this, but I will continue to talk about it uh, uh, because I want us to so grasp it. Because if we're going to inherit the geographical land, we need to understand what what our inheritance is as believers. You know that we are uh, part of our inheritance is that we are called to be friends with Jesus Christ. We are called to in, uh, to have um, a personal relationship with Him. We are called to receive His forgiveness. That is part of our inheritance. We receive the forgiveness of our sins. We are called to receive justification of us for our sins we are called to receive the righteousness of god we are given the holy spirit as a down payment a guarantee of what is to come and so that means we are called part of our inheritance is to live in the fullness of the power of the holy spirit to live in the gifts of the holy spirit the gifts of the holy spirit are our rightful inheritance they don't just happen to us we have ownership of them but we have to lay hold of them we have to say lord help me to walk in prophecy help me to walk in the gift of healing and so on we have to lay hold of it we have to be proactive it doesn't just happen we have uh, part of our inheritance is that we become children of god We receive the spirit of adoption. We are seated in heavenly places uh, next to Jesus in the heavenly realms. Amazing, astonishing truth. We have power over sin. We have victory over demonic powers. And we can have peace with God. We have authority over evil in our own lives and the lives of others. All of these promises of God belong to us as his children, as believers in him. This is our inheritance in Christ Jesus. Now, you, we may not always uh, necessarily take possession and fully enjoy the blessing of all these things in our lives. But here God is saying to us, in effect, to us, his people, don't you realize All of this I have given to you. What are you waiting for? Don't live in the wilderness as Israel did. Take hold of the inheritance that I have given you. Take possession of that which you already have ownership of. 
And I believe that this is a season for us to allow God to hit the reset button in our lives and to allow him to reveal afresh the fullness of the inheritance that is ours in Christ so that we can more fully possess that which he has already given ownership of us to. How do we do that? Well, there are two simple things. I say they're simple. They're not always easy to do. But number one is by spending time with Jesus. There is no shortcut. When we look at the life of Jesus, what was the foundation of his walk? What was the foundation of his ministry of walking in the Holy Spirit, of of the power that he enjoyed, of bringing transformation into the lives of those that he ministered to? It was his intimate personal relationship with the Father. And the amazing thing is that our inheritance as believers is that we get to enjoy a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. No longer does the curtain exist between us and God. Jesus on the cross tore the curtain in two. That means we have full access into the throne room of God. We can come into his presence if we've repented and the sin of, of, uh, and our sin has been removed. We've received his forgiveness. We've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Then we can come into the presence of Jesus Christ. Again, though, that is our rightful, we are rightful owners of that. But we have to step into it. We actually have to cultivate a relationship with Jesus through spending time with him. There's no shortcut to that. But if we do that, we will find ourselves growing. We will find ourselves growing in uh, the things of the spirit are growing in our understanding of scripture. And that brings me to my second point of how we can inherit the fullness of what Christ has purchased for us. In Joshua chapter one, as we've just read in verses seven to eight, God says to Joshua, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Part of God's instructions uh, to Joshua for taking possession of the promised land was to know and obey the word of God. The same is true for us. We cannot take possession of our inheritance unless we go to the word and allow God through the power of the Holy Spirit to reveal to us what our rightful inheritance is through Christ Jesus. You know, you may have given your life to Jesus, but have you allowed him to possess every aspect of how you live? Have you allowed him to possess your finances, your work, your prayer life? your friends, your family. You know, of course, this is a lifetime task for all of us to allow God to have full possession of every area of our lives. But is there some area of your life where you're still not enjoying your inheritance in Christ? You know, there are things that put us off from laying hold of the fullness of our inheritance in Christ. Just like the people of Israel, that can be fear and unbelief. They didn't believe that they could overcome the giants that, they, that were in the land. You know, sometimes we think, well, there's no way that I could walk in signs and wonders. There's no way that I could pray for somebody and see them healed. Well, that is not true. That is a lie because it's God's word says that that is the rightful uh, inheritance of every believer. There are, no, there are not some believers who can walk in that and other believe, believers who, can't, who don't walk in that. That is the rightful inheritance of every believer. It is right, the rightful inheritance of every believer to proclaim that the kingdom of God is near in power. And so we can allow fear because we might think, well, I'm fearful of doing that. Uh, maybe we allow unbelief and just say, well, I just don't believe that's true of me. But we have to repent of those things. We have to say, Lord, help me. Thank you that this is my inheritance. Lord, I I struggle to believe it, but help me to lay hold of that which is my inheritance. Help me to take possession of it. You know, distractions can come in the way and they can, uh, we can be distracted from laying hold of all that God has for us. We can just feel unworthy, just unworthy of uh, God's forgiveness. 
unworthy of receiving the Holy Spirit. But again, that is not true. All of this is ours. And we have to say, God, if you have said it, if this is what you've said in your word, then it's a done deal. Whatever lies I might be tempted to believe, I'm going to shut the door to them. I'm going to take every thought that is not of you captive to Christ Jesus. And I'm going to say, OK, I'm struggling with it, but I'm going to choose to believe your word is true for me as is it true for every other believer. Help me, Lord, to take possession of the promises and the truth in your word so that I can live in the fullness of my inheritance. That is our task. That is what we're called to do. That is what God wants us to do in this season. You know, the land was the inheritance of the people of God. And as the book of Joshua progresses, the people of God, they begin to take possession of the land and God gives them many great victories. But by chapter 18, even though they've made great gains, they've still failed to take full possession of the land. And so Joshua once again addresses the nation, a nation, and he says to them, uh, he says, and this is the message version of chapter 18, verse 3, Joshua says, How long are you going to sit on your hands, putting off, taking possession of the land that God, the God of your ancestors, has given you? Ouch. How long are you going to sit on your hands, putting off, taking possession of the land that God, the God of your ancestors, has given you? Joshua was talking straight to the people of Israel. He was holding no punches because he didn't want them to miss the fullness of what God had for them. And God is saying the same to us today. You know, we see the difference here between ownership and possession. As Israel received the land as a gift from the Lord, so you and I have received every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. But the, but the question I believe that God is asking each one of us, including myself, how long will you wait before you begin to take possession of all that I have given to you? It's worth us just pondering on that in this season. Am I living in the fullness of what Christ has purchased for me? Have I settled for just being comfortable in my faith? Have I just settled for things that I know are easy for me to do? Other areas where I just need to lay hold of God's promises and God's truths for my life, for me to fully walk in his blessings and his truth. Let's use this season wisely to once again revisit the scriptures and take full possession of our rightful inheritance. I believe that this is a season of us getting ready. It's a season of preparation for what is to come, because not only does God want us to lay hold of the promises that he has for us and to own our rightful inheritance in Christ, but I believe that he also wants us to inherit a geographical land by taking possession of it and extending the boundaries of God's kingdom into our community, into our city and beyond the church, not just St. Aidan's, but the church in general. But more of that next week. Amen. Why don't we just take a moment to respond? Maybe God has spoken to you this morning. Maybe you know there's just some area in your life that you have not allowed God to possess, to fully have control over. Maybe there's just a promise of God's word that you know you, you just, you haven't stepped into the fullness of it. It may be praying for people to be healed and you just think I, I haven't stepped into that that is yours in Christ Jesus whatever it is it may be just that you struggle to believe that you are forgiven struggle to believe that you can receive the Holy Spirit today is the day of saying I'm not going to listen to the lies of the enemy anymore I don't want to walk in the wilderness. I don't want to not inherit anymore the fullness of what Christ has purchased me on the cross. We have to lay hold. He's paid the price for us to live in this stuff. And so it's up to us. It's incumbent upon us. We have a responsibility and we one day will give an account of ourselves. Have we laid hold fully of the promises that Christ has paid for us on the cross? And so let's just spend a moment responding and saying, Lord, help me to take full possession of the promises that you have given me. Let's maybe close our eyes and just welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you.
Holy Spirit, we ask you to fill us. Holy Spirit, we ask you to bring fresh revelation of the promises of God, of the fullness of our inheritance in Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit, impart to us fresh revelation. Enable us to have our eyes opened, our, our hearts opened afresh to the truth of who you have called us to be. Help us, Lord, to not be like the Israelites and to walk in the wilderness, but help us with a fresh zeal, a fresh passion, a fresh uh, unction of the Holy Spirit to lay hold of the fullness of the, of the inheritance that is rightfully ours. And maybe there is something in particular that you want to ask God for this morning. It might be that you want to just be able to live in the truth that you are forgiven. It might be that you want to receive the fullness of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It might be that you want to receive one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Ask God to help you to take possession of that today. Now is the time to hit the reset button. Come Holy Spirit. Fill us, Lord, we pray. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you, Lord. Just excite our hearts at this amazing inheritance that is ours. Give us a fresh love and hunger and desire for the scriptures and to grow in our intimacy with Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to respond, uh, continue our response by worshipping together and we're going to sing together oceans so i'm going to uh, once again share my screen and uh, we'll move to oceans and so uh, please do join with me uh, in singing this wonderful song and inviting god to take us deeper than our feet could ever wander Speak. 
spirit lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger. In the presence of my Savior Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wonder My faith will be made stronger What a great uh, prayer. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. And uh, we're now going to have a time of prayer ourselves. And I'm going to bring up on the screen the response. So the response uh, is when I say, Lord, your kingdom come, would you respond with your will be done? And so we're going to have uh, a time of prayer now. And we're going to begin by praying uh, for the government. Um, we've been praying each week for the government and I think it's still incumbent on us to continue to do so. So let's pray uh, for the government. Father, we just give you thanks for the government of the United Kingdom, Lord. And uh, we pray for your hand upon the government and the devolved governments as well in Scotland, in Wales. Uh, and Father, we pray for your spirit of wisdom, your spirit of grace, your spirit of insight to be upon uh, Boris Johnson to be upon the cabinet, to be upon all the team of people, the medical advisors and so on, who are part of the uh, team that is helping to lead the nation in this time of lockdown. And as the government thinks about how we may be able to ease some of the lockdown measures, give them wisdom and help them to make wise decisions, help them to not buckle to pressure, but to just do what is the right thing for the long-term health and both uh, physical health and economic health of this nation. We thank you for the government. We thank you for all that they are doing. We pray your protection over their health, their own health, and just strengthen them in this season, Lord, in body, mind, and spirit, and help all those folk involved to work together for the good of the nation. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. And again, Lord, we, we're going to pray next for the NHS. And Father, we want to say thank you once more for the amazing NHS staff, for the doctors and the medical staff, uh, for the support staff and uh, administrative staff. Lord, we just say thank you for them. Thank you for all that they continue to do under extraordinary and very testing circumstances. Lord, where they are feeling, where staff are feeling jaded and tired and maybe fearful for their own health, would you bring peace? Would you bring strength? Lord, we ask that those are, that are suffering from COVID-19, we want to command healing for them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we continue to ask for the provision of protective clothing for the NHS. 
and for all the care homes. Lord, we pray protection over the care homes as well. Lord, we want to say we want to drive this COVID-19 virus away uh, from this nation and the nations in the name of Jesus. Lord, be with the NHS. We thank you for the wonderful amount of money that people have donated to the cause of uh, Colonel Tom Moore uh, that is going to go towards the NHS. We say thank you for the generosity of the nation. Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Next, we're going to pray for our schools. Father, we bring before you our schools that continue, some of the schools that continue to be open during this lockdown period, continue to look out after children of key workers and some of the most vulnerable children in our nation. We say thank you, Lord, for the schools. Thank you for the head teachers, the teachers, the support staff who are continuing to do an amazing job to provide this service to the nation. Lord, we ask for your protection over them. We ask for your provision for them. We ask that you protect both the staff and the children from COVID-19, from sickness and illness in Jesus' name. Father, we just say thank you for them. Surround the schools with your mighty angels. And Lord, as we, we ask for wisdom for the government and all those involved with thinking about how schools may be able to reopen more fully, help them to make good, sound and wise decisions. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. And Lord, we also pray for parents uh, who are at home having to look after their children in this season, uh, maybe having to take time off work. Uh, and Lord, we, we know the challenge that it can be for families in this season. And we pray particularly for single parent families as well. Lord, we ask that you would uh, bring peace to families and all the family dynamics and relationships in this season where there are tensions would you smooth them over would you bring your grace and peace and reconciliation to bear lord would you give parents and children the grace and patience and love that they need at this time and especially lord we bring before you families that are really struggling for whatever reason that might be various different reasons no doubt we just bring you before them uh, bring them before you now Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Finally, let's just have a moment to bring before the Lord anybody that might be particularly on our hearts at the moment that we know in person is suffering in body, mind or spirit. Let's have a moment of silence. Just name those people before God and then I'll finish uh, and we'll all finish together with the Lord's Prayer. So let's have a moment of silence. Father, we just lift before you all those people that are on our hearts. Father, we are so aware that there is a great deal of suffering in the world at the moment. There always is at any moment in time, whether it's COVID-19 or not. But we're particularly aware that the suffering is heightened. And so, Father, we ask that you would draw near to all those that are suffering in body, mind or spirit at this time. Would you bring healing would you bring a deep sense of your presence to bear in their lives? Would you give strength and comfort? Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. And let's just round up our prayers as always by saying together the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we are going to... Uh, Come to our final song for this morning, our final hymn.
And it is the wonderful classic hymn, Be Thou My Vision. And, you know, we need God to be our, continue to be our vision in this season, to continue to be the Lord of our hearts, the Lord of all we do, all we think about. We need to police our minds, police our hearts, and just say, Lord, would you be my vision? Would you be my strength? Would you be everything that I need? Jesus says that I am the bread of life, which means that he, we can come to him for the sustenance, for everything that we need on a daily basis. And we, when we come before him, we lay our cares and our worries before him. We can trust that he hears our prayers and that he will sustain us through difficult times. So let's sing together the wonderful hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you've enjoyed uh, today's service. I hope you're feeling encouraged and uplifted in your faith. Uh, we'll be back again next week for another edition of St. Aidan's Church at Home. And uh, please do stay safe. Please do continue to pray for the body of Christ at St. Aidan's. Be praying for the nation at this time and the nations. I uh, hope you have a wonderful week and uh, look forward to you joining me again very soon. And just to say, please do pass on this. If, if you know anybody else who may benefit from watching this service and just worshiping 
whether they're a believer or not, or not a believer um, as of yet, just I just encourage you, please do share this video. Um, and, uh, you know, as many people as possible can, can be encouraged. Now for the final blessing. To God the Father, who loved us and made us accepted in the Beloved. To God the Son, who loved us and loosed us from our sins by his own blood. To God the Holy Spirit, who spreads the love of God abroad in our hearts. To the one true God, be all love and all glory for time and for eternity. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you throughout this next week and always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again for watching. Take care and see you next week. Bye bye.